If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn away from their wicked ways, Over to you, Sims. I think you, uh, we are muted. Can you please unmute? Sorry about that. I'd love to greet everybody in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And I'm also welcoming everyone that's online and tuning on um, to this afternoon program. Mm, before we start our afternoon program, um, I'm asking for Umama Kuta to open with a prayer. All right, um, let's pray. Ulela Nyakuyaova Ubawena Ulungile, you are God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Be with us today when we call upon your name as Abo Mama saying, mm -hmm. come see the savior of the world. Cover the speakers, Maloso Lungleyo. Lead them, Sindisi Wokolo. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Mame Kuto. Okay, um, we have a speaker now for our afternoon program and her name is Dr. Londi OSCBC Mabuye. Before she can start speaking, I'd love to give her an introduction about her. And she'll be talking about dental care. I personally am excited um, for this topic um, because I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna learn a lot about dental care. Well, for someone that doesn't even like the dentist. So I think, um, 
I'm going to learn so much from this session. And her introduction goes like this. Dr. Londi Wasibisi Maboye is married to Itu Maboye, and they are blessed with three beautiful babies, Unati, aged 11, Pihello, aged 6, and Kosi, aged 7. Dr. Sibisi Maboye is a Pretoria-based pediatric dentist with over 10 years of a vast experience in general dentistry, community dentistry, as well as pediatric dentistry both in the academia and corporate. By God's grace, she currently runs a successful private practice with special focus on children, kids dental home. Outside of her profession, she's a passionate wellness coach, keen cyclist, hiker, and takes special interest in a healthy active lifestyle. Dr. Londiwa Sibisi Mabuye is a baptized member of the Easterist Seventh-day Adventist Church. And together with her husband, they are involved in the ministry. At this point, I'd love to give the platform to Dr. Londi Wesibisi Maboye. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, saints. Um, before maybe I begin, uh, may I just ask, I would like to share my slides. Go ahead and share. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there we are. All right, so afternoon saints, thank you so much for the invite. Um, my name is Lundiwe Maboye, as I've been introduced, uh, introduced and uh, thank you so much for that um, warm welcome and introduction. Um, we've got a beautiful theme, I will go reach my world. And uh, it's something that I'm very passionate about, just reaching out, um, you know, as we all need to shine in the little corners where we are. Okay. All right, just give me a few minutes while I sort myself here. There we go. There we are. Beloved, this is my prayer for you as I will be going through the slides. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And this is in um, 3 John verse 2. So for, for the longest time, we have neglected the issues of oral health. So it's about time that we really um, shift the focus and go back to the basics, you know. And my actually my job today is very easy because um, the topic that relates to oral health and dental hygiene, as I've been asked to speak on dental hygiene, um, is really a basic, um, it's part of grooming, hey? Because if you recall, um, sorry, if you recall, um, you were not taught by a dentist you know, how to brush, how to look after your teeth and, and things like that. So it's really part of grooming. Uh, you're actually taught by your parents, by your mom to say, you know, you need to take care of yourself you need to take care of your oral hygiene. So um, my job today is gonna be much easier because it's we, we, we're just gonna be um, talking on the stuff that we already know. Maybe we have lost it along the way um, maybe we've neglected some, you know, some good practices that were adopted, but, you know, somehow life happens and some of these uh, practices, we, we lose them along the way. So here is really just to encourage each other, um, just to refocus and, um, and see how we can move forward in terms of our oral health. Right, so our discussion points for today will be um, 
um, the, on the, the first one would be what is oral health, why dental, high, uh, dental care and oral hygiene, um, keeping your teeth longer, okay, which is a bit of a challenge. Um, five things that you can do to maintain oral health. Number five, benefits of toothbrushing. Tips for choosing appropriate toothbrush, plug versus calculus. And uh, I'll be sharing with you just a little bit um, on what uh, we do um, to reach out to the communities. Um, and then I will be concluding thereafter. So it's going to be a very, very short presentation. So um, on the first one, it's what is oral health? So what is it? What is oral health? And uh, let's just break it down. You know, we use these words interchangeably, oral and dental. Dental referring to teeth and oral referring to mouth. So your oral and your dental health is basically relating to your, anything around your teeth, you know, anything around your mouth, which involves the soft tissues, right? Which would be your tongue and, and so forth, other soft, other soft tissues. So that's what oral health um, or dental health refers to. So it's straightforward like that. Now, my theme for today is no health without oral health. And uh, because, you know, oral health, it is true, they say is a window to your overall health. So you can't say I'm healthy when there's something not right with your, with your own oral health or your dental health. You cannot, you know. So um, it's important really that, you know, we start it where it starts and it starts up there in our oral, in our oral habits. Now, why is dental care and oral hygiene so important to you? Um, it's like your overall health. Sorry, your oral health affects your overall health. So, uh, you know, there is a connection between our oral cavity and the rest of the body, right? Um, and let's take a few examples. Think about when you have a toothache, you know, and there's something not really right. You, you can't function. Um, you can't eat well because of toothache. If you can't eat well, you, you know, your weight is affected and, and so forth. Um, so we can't take it for granted, the issues of oral health, because really um, they affect you know, your overall health or your general health or your general well-being. You know, we can take another example and say um, denture wearers, right? So these people who wear false teeth, they're known as false, right? Um, they also struggle a lot. You know, part of what we do is also we reach out, we go to old age homes and uh, you have no idea the issues that these um, elderly experience, you know, um, and they will tell you and say, you know, I was not this size. I have lost a lot of weight because I have lost all my teeth. So sometimes we take it for granted and think, ah, oh, if it, you know, if I've got a toothache or, you know, something is wrong, no problem. I will just, you know, I'll remove it. And neglecting, you know, the other effects that will cause other adverse effects to that, you know, and uh, with a negative impact to your general health. So, you know, it takes us back that we really need to take care of our teeth, look, look up, uh, after our oral hygiene. Um, make sure that your oral hygiene status in its, you know, tip top. We take another example, it's many of them, uh, but just for today, we'll, we'll keep it general. We're not really gonna zoom into details and the mechanics of everything. We just keep it general. We take another example, which is uh, diabetics, people with um, uh, um, um, diabetes, right? Um, these are the other category of patients that really um, suffers with oral health issues, numerous of them, others being dry mouth, and uh, what we normally see with these patients is that um, um, they have what you call the, um, their gum is affected as well. Yes, that's what I want to say. Their gum and their bone um, of their teeth is affected in the long run. And then, um, you know, their teeth become loose. 
because of these issues. So um, it takes us back, Basil, wanted to say, you know, there's no oral, there's no general health without oral health. And because, you know, whatever that happens here can really affect your well being. Now, it's, it's, it's just straight and simple. If you want to save your teeth, then you need to maintain oral hygiene. You know, um, it, it's about time that oral hygiene is, is a priority to you, not a, a by the way. You know, for some of us, it's a by the way, you know. Um, you know, I like the children, I'm more focused in, in children, and they are so honest, so, so, so honest. You know, you'll ask the parent, how, you know, how many times does she brush? Then the parent will say, Two, uh, two times or three times, then the child will say, no, a dog, I brush only one time or I brush once a week, you know? So it's really about time that we, um, we prioritize our oral health. Obviously to prevent tooth loss and to prevent dental caries, which is a tooth decay, you know? Um, and that's the, you know, did you know that tooth decay is actually um, the most common form of oral disease? Um, in dentistry. So it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter because it destroys the teeth. And that's when all the other problems emanate, you know, once you lose just one tooth, you know, to you, it may look like you've just lost one tooth, but um, the impact thereof, it can be very hectic. So if you can uh, minimize, prevent, um, that will be great. And that is why uh, we're just here today to, to raise some awareness around those issues. I hope we are still fine. And uh, just continuing why your dental health or uh, why it's important to maintain oral hygiene um, is that, you know, your, your, your teeth have several functions, lots and lots of functions. Some, you know, basic one is to chew. Just, just think about that. You know, um, that's why we, we, we say I've got favorite food, you know, you know, people will quote and say, uh, for instance, uh, you know, your favorite dish, but think about that favorite dish or that favorite snack of yours. Imagine if you cannot chew. So we must really have respect for these guys that are called teeth because, you know, they, they, they actually they're doing the most, eh? they're doing the most for us. So one of them is to, is to, is to chew the food and, um, and that also talks to the issues of digestion, right? Um, but what the picture that you, say, you see there is something very close to my heart to say, um, this very teeth, your set of teeth that you have um, also maintains the vertical height. Did you know that your teeth they, you know, maintain that contour, you know, the person that you see, that you appreciate, um, you know, uh, says Prudence, your husband, make Begile eat, my wife looks beautiful. It's those teeth, you know, they've maintained that vertical height. Um, so it's very important, as you can see, because once you lose them, you know, eventually all of them, that's when it drops your height. You no longer have, you know, that nice elongated form and it just collapses. And I'm sure you can appreciate that we see this mostly with our elderly, right? Our geriatrics, our opas and omas. Um, so, you know, it's not a, a good space to be because then you then lose your bone um, and, 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 and so many other things, you know, once you lose your teeth. So they, these teeth, they, they serve a lot and a lot of uh, and numerous functions. And um, so we just really need to take time and prioritize our oral health. And that's the message um, today. And uh, by the way, ladies, I was just thinking when I was preparing and looking at this picture and I'm saying, I mean, it's women's ministries and, you know, for the single ladies, um, you know, our phone so shorter and your height is, has collapsed like this. So is that is really something to, um, you know, to look into, you know, so isn't it? So let's just take some time and, and, and really focus um, and, and look after our oral health. Um, now, just briefly, 
you know, these things we see every day, we hear about them every day. Like I said, really, it's nothing. This we were taught at home, you know. I know because my mom taught me how to brush, not a dentist, you know. So just five things that you can remind ourselves that you can do to maintain your oral health, you know. Very basic, very simple, you know, sounds like an obvious tooth brushing, you know. And yeah, that's where you'll hear your dentist say you need to brush at least how many times a day? Two times a day. And then uh, with the morning and, uh, you know, at night as well. Now, I must tell you this, it's very important to brush um, or rather, you know, the brushing at night is very important in this fashion. Remember your toothbrush, not your toothbrush, but your toothpaste, right? Your toothpaste has fluoride. Now, when you brush at night, you're giving your time, you're giving your mouth time just to, uh, uh, um, to refresh at night because then the, the uh, toothpaste, your fluoridated toothpaste, it doesn't matter the brand. Um, you're not really interested what brand, but we wanted to have fluoride, right? So then that effect of fluoride stays in the mouth overnight. So did you know that you're not supposed to eat after you've brushed your teeth at night? You know, ideally you shouldn't. You know, and I know some of us, we wake until late, and then you want to snack and, and so forth. So, but it's important that after you've, it should be the last thing. I always say to my, my patients, it should be the last thing you do uh, before yeah, getting into bed so that you will get that effect of fluoride um, working overnight. How many of us floss here? Do we floss? Bazalwani, how many of us floss? When is the last time you flossed? Have you even flossed before? Did you even know there was a floss? You know, so it's important to floss because now this uh, string, you know, you can take it for granted that small little, little string, right? But it goes a long way because it goes in all the areas where your brush cannot reach. So it goes in between the teeth where the toothbrush goes, um, it doesn't reach. So it's important to uh, floss and we say at least once a day right it's not much to ask just once a day at least you can floss and uh, we always encourage our patients to say you can do it watching television if it's you know it's a cumbersome uh, exercise for you you don't really have to be in the bathroom while you're watching television you can you know your favorite um, movie or whatever um, or sermon or whatever it is then you just um, uh, 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 floss gently you know and let's just remember, don't be hard on it. Uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be bleeding. If you are bleeding, you're doing it wrong. It means you are fighting with your gums. All right. So, but really our focus today is on tooth brushing. So I won't, I won't dive into details with two, three, and four. But it's, it's just for you to, to understand that if you want to maintain oral hygiene, all these five things should be in place. Fluoride, we've got fluoridated toothpaste, fluoridated mouthwashes as well. The diet is another, it's a topic of another day, you know, snacking. What type of snacks do you snack with? You know, is it a, a sugary things that release acid that will destroy your enamel and so forth, right? And the very important is to see a dentist or a, a, a dental health professional. Um, you, you know, you need to visit these people at least twice a year. And it's for a reason, you know, the reason is that some of these things, you know, we are able to pick them up before um, it really um, goes to what, you know, while we can still at least uh, save some of the stuff and save your teeth as well. So it's important to visit your dentist regularly. So, you know, with all five, like I'm saying, the, the, the today the highlight is really on toothbrushing because I, I, I just think toothbrushing without the flaws and everything is a basic that you can do. Really, really the basic, you know, maybe the other stuff sometimes there's also cost to them, you know? These mouthwashes, they don't really come cheap. Do you agree? Even the flaws as well. But at least if you've got a toothbrush, you know, it goes a long way. And, you know, because then it will stop the plaque buildup. Huh? Um, so we need to be brushing as we do the actual brushing we're saying goodbye to plaque because that is formed like, you know, all the time. So you can't say I, I brushed yesterday for the whole week, you know, cause plaque, I mean, you're eating every, every time, you know? So then there, there's a plaque buildup all the time. That is why it's important that we also 
uh, we are brushing at least two times a day. Another thing is that, you know, um, you want to prevent tooth decay, right? We've, I think we have spoken, spoken in length about tooth decay. Um, so it's important to brush because once you have tooth decay, then other problems come into place uh, and it is just a series of adverse effects. And Bazalwan, let's talk about it to avoid bad breath. Worse this time, we are always in masks, all of us. So when there's an opportunity to, to remove your mask, uh, for some reason, you know, you know, you don't wanna find yourself in a compromised position. And, um, you know, so really bad breath, it, 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 it becomes a challenge, you know, sometimes even in families, it's challenging, you know, um, because it's a very sensitive issue, you know, how do you approach someone and say your breath is not really and anything like things like those. So as Chekhan, you know, before you leave the house, you know, as Chekhan, that's what we do with my husband and say, hey, um, or whatever the case is. Né? So we must be open enough with these issues so that we um, we don't go out there and expose ourselves. So if you your tooth your, your toothbrushing um a process will help with that. And another thing is that, <clears throat> excuse me, just a second. Now, I spoke of plaque. Now, this is the danger. Hence I'm saying we're focusing on toothbrushing. If you leave that plaque for too long, look at this picture here. The picture on the, the bottom one, um, it's just plaque. So plaque is soft, you know, it's like whitish. And uh, when you leave the plaque, it hardens. And um, we say it calcifies and it forms a hard layer that we, you know, it's, it's, it's commonly known as tata, right? And this we call uh, calculus, these chunks, these chunks of calculus that yellow. And that's what will cause your bad breath. Because also at this point, your, your gums will start to bleed. You know, you'll go to the dentist and say, when I brush, my gums just bleed. And it's this plaque, you know, it's been there now, no one is attending to it, you know, and uh, there comes a time, then it, it, it becomes hard and it sits on your gum. When it sits on your gum, then your gums respond and say, hey, hey, you know, what's happening here? Then they start to react and how they react is, is, is through the form of bleeding. But the good news is, even if you have this plaque, you know, your dentist is able, is able to help. Um, I've seen people that have this and they, they didn't know at all that this is, you know, the, because it becomes part of you. Né? And sometimes you can actually, when you walk your tongue around, you can actually feel this stuff. And it feels like it's, it's part of your teeth. Eh? So that is why it's important to go and visit your dentist because, you know, then he can pick up uh, some of these issues as well while it's still early. So this is how it's important to brush just to prevent all these issues. I'm not gonna dwell much in this because for me, um, it's just, uh, you know, it does not matter really. Um, what you just need, you know, I, I get to be asked a lot, a, a power toothbrush, electric a toothbrush, or which one is better? Um, for me, you just need a soft to medium um, toothbrush. It mustn't be too big. Remember, if it's too big, it means then you can't reach the back areas. It means you can't reach your molars nicely. Okay, so it means you're only brushing half of your mouth. So you're not reaching at the back. So we need a small um, head. And uh, the bristles must be um, soft to medium. Yes, the bristles must be soft to medium. Now, most of us believe that the toothbrush bristles must be hard, né? isn't it? We believe that the harder you brush and then you know, the cleaner are your teeth. And no, 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 it's not about that. It's really about the technique. Uh, so toothbrushing is technique sensitive. It's how you do it, you know, like the, the, they always show us secular movements, uh, but you shouldn't do it hard. When you do it hard, just quickly, you're going to eat away your enamel. And that's when you get the sensitivity. Um, when you're drinking, 
cool things or hot things, you know, because most of your NML of your tooth structure has been literally um, just been eaten away by the toothbrush. So just make sure that your toothbrush is not um, hard. And another one is to replace it regularly. Um, you know, when Ossis Prudence, when she invited me, I forgot. I should have asked what I tell in the toothbrush. I can connect this or born with Anja and Lama toothbrush. I said, This is why I'm a guy, you know. Are they being changed regularly? Or some of us, local side, you know, two years back, or Tanga Lomga Noako as a present. It's a location. It says, It's in Chile. We always message in Chile and I say, it says that I have leg, you know. It shouldn't get to that, Barcelona. So we need to be changing it. Actually, they say three months. Yeah, every sounds like a waste, ne? But it's the right way because you want the toothbrush, you want the bristles to be effective in cleaning, right? Um. So when was this? Two, three, maybe three years ago. I had a problem with my ankle for the longest time. You know, and it really bothered me. It was really a pain that was not going away. So I went to consult a, a, a physiotherapist and he said to me, you need to change your, because you, you're quite active. Uh, you need to be changing um, uh, your shoes every three months. I was like, my goodness, well, that would not be possible, you know. But the moment I started to, um, to change that, my ankle problems just went away, you know. So some of the things we must really take them by the book. And I learned that day. Okay, I'm about to close. Now, here we are. And um, the mission is clear, Bazalwana. The mission is clear. And I will go reach my world. That is our um, a, a mission, you know, um, that has been given to us to say, I will go reach my world. Women's Ministries embraces the Seventh Day Adventist Churches um, 2020 to 2025 world theme. What a powerful theme, you know, to go out. Um, and uh, like I said when I started, you know, our little corners, um, let's use our professions, let's use our, let's use our professions, let's use our careers, let's use our businesses, uh, let's use our gifts, our talents. There's so much we can do to really reach out to others, you know? And um, I think that's my main message today to say, let's use um, the gifts that God gave us, our businesses and, and, and other things, our talents and uh, to reach out and say, I will go. You know, it's my daily prayer every day as I wake up and say, Lord, here am I. I will go, you know, sometimes it's hard, but we need to show up for God's mission each and every day and say, I will go. And that's um, our just small bit in, in, in reaching out uh, at Kids Dental Home. We go and reach out to communities and, um, you know, what the Lord is doing is totally um, unbelievable, you know. So just where you are, you know, use what you have. And um, when you raise your, your hand and say, I will go, it's amazing when God looks at that hand that is raised, how he changes the whole thing. And when he steps in. And uh, reaching your world or reaching my world is to touch the heart and lives of someone in your circle of influence whether it's your family, friends, neighborhood, workplace, um, the reaching your world is to show and tell the world the good news of our soon coming savior. And this is the message, Bazalwane, that we need to reach out. Um, time is no more. So um, with whatever that you have, you know, you can make a difference. It's, it's you know, the, the, with our mobile, we've got a mobile clinic, you know, it's amazing how we, um, just by having those little ones, how we reach out to the teachers, the connections we build, the relationships we build with them, uh, teachers, parents, you know, it's totally amazing how we reach out and, you know, cause then it, it leads to other things and, um, and we can really reach out in the manner that we will never even think of 
really if we make ourselves available. So I just want to encourage each and every one of us to say, let's continue um, the good fight. So this is where we started. And um, oh, do, do, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19. Now for the longest time we have thought when this verse refers to the body and we think body starts from here down. We've longest time we've neglected the head and neck area. And with that message, I just want us to encourage us and say, our body starts from here, Bazalwan. It doesn't start from here, you know? Um, so please, your smile is very important to us. Look after your oral hygiene, look after your oral health, you know? And um, when you do that, you will keep your teeth longer uh, in your mouth. And uh, may God bless you. With those words, well, those words I just want to thank um, the leadership for inviting me. It's always really um, an honor and a privilege to fellowship with my melody, um, SDA Women's Ministries. You know, in the past we've met um, for presentations. It's the first time we meet in this fashion and it's such a blessing. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much, Doctor, for that informative um, presentation. And I'd like to ask the church if they have any questions. Okay. I see there's a message over here. Mm. Okay, Doctor, we have a question here. All right. Yeah, they're asking if is it safe to do teeth whitening? Um, it is safe if you do it by the healthcare professional. I see these days, um, everyone in their corner they do teeth whitening. I wouldn't really encourage those. So I would say it's safe for as long as, because remember, um, then there's you know, the stuff that's there, you know, it's got different percentages. So you don't wanna do stuff that's really going to cause harm into your teeth. So it is safe for as long as it's within controlled environment. That would be my answer to that. And by the way, can I just add on? Um, it's good to do teeth whitening if you've got, you think you've got issues, but you know, I get some, some people say, no, I want my teeth to be white, white. No one really has white, white teeth, you know. Um, it's just according, you know, it's according to your, your, your teeth shade is according to your skin color. Yeah, so um, don't, yeah, because others really, they panic and say, no, I want them white, white. Um, yeah, so just remember that. Why do you want them white, white? But also appreciate, you know, that shade that God has given you. There's nothing wrong with enhancing it. I'm just saying, thank you. Okay, and another question says, how much does it cost for teeth whitening? <laughs> um, it depends where you do it and with who you do it. So the, 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 the price is vary with different practitioners, you know. Um, yeah, that we, that's a matter we can take on the side, I think, to be safe. Simply, you're muted. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting to unmute. Um, they are saying now, but more other questions. What is the difference between a dentist and an orthodontist? 
a dentist and an orthodontist. So a dentist, um, you're a general practitioner like myself. An orthodontist, it means you have done um, extra four years of specialty and they deal with crooked teeth and um, they're, more, they're more specialized in the field of straightening your teeth. So they deal with braces and crooked teeth, yes. That's an orthodontist. I hope that um, is clear. Um, Doctor M, uh, yep. oh, she's back. Okay, she's back. What is happening? Okay. Apologies, I'm having um, network difficulty. Okay, doctor, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. I'm going through um, the questions on the chat and at the same time, I'm trying to see myself speaking. So I think that's why I'm happy. Okay, can you see the questions on your side? Um, let me go to the chat. Yeah, Bo, um, I can see. All right, so it says it's safe. We've done the safe. Okay, what is the difference between dentist and orthodontist? And obviously, another uh, difference is the cost. Eh? They cost more. So, um, how much does how much does it cost if you do not have medical aid? I suppose now this is the dentist, orthodontist, or I'm not sure if it relates to orthodontist or it relates to tooth um, whitening, this cost. I am not it's sure. Whitening. Oh, the two, oh, that's the one. Yeah, it will cost you anything between 2.5 and 5,000. Okay, so that's like a range. Because um, remember, it's like it's cosmetic and that is why medical aid doesn't pay for it because it's it's, it's just, you know, um, it, it, they they take it, you don't need it. And let's see another question here. I used toothpaste with no fluoride. Is that okay? I need to use the one with fluoride. Maybe the question will be, and this person can chat to me after, why the first place she used the one without fluoride? Because we also know that in areas that, you know, there's areas where um, like Bologwane, Limpopo, right? And I think it's Rustenburg, where the water has too much fluoride. And we see a lot of patients from those areas, they, they present with fluorosis, which is a high content of fluoride in water. So, um, I just need to know, you know, in that's the case, then you don't need, you know, because already there is um, fluoride. So it's, those are the issues we can understand, but we can, we can, you know, you're welcome to contact me after the session. I am, I'm, 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 Prudence, I'm happy to give advice or any, answer any questions, even after the sessions, um, after the session. Okay, so let's continue. And when you're asking if you need to use the fluoride one, remember fluoride, it, it, 
it um, remineralizes your truth. So it just reinforces all the good stuff into your enamel and make it strong. And this is why the emphasis with fluoride. All right, so let's see another one. How often should one go for cleaning? Twice a year. Let's not say twice a year. Let's say every six months. Okay, so it's um, um, the first, is, yeah, let's just say six months. So it's twice a year. We usually say twice a year. And I think that twice a year comes from the medical aid, you know, because they can only pay for it um, like that. So, but it's basically every six, you know, every six months. And then what is a maxillofacial? Wow. Okay, maxillofacial is also, it's also a specialty like orthodontist. So we've got different special, uh, specialties. Um, it's also um, dentist, it's maxillofacial, it's prostodontics. So maxillofacial is one of them and it deals with um, injuries of head and neck area. Okay, so um, when you, were, you are involved in an MVA or somebody stabbed you, um, 2011, I used to work in maxillofacial unit at Inkosa Albert Lutule Hospital in Durban. And there, you know, we, we did a lot of also theater cases because these are trauma, basically, it, it's just trauma. Yeah, let's just say it's trauma, mostly trauma, but also pathology. Right, pathology will be any a lesion, anything that you see is not normal. You know, all of a sudden you have this growth, um, whether it's inside or it's outside, and it's growing in size, and uh, maybe it starts being painful. It starts not being painful, but just growing something like you know things like those. So any um, uh, uh, abnormalities, then the surgeons will deal with that, and also trauma. Yeah, so I think I've answered that one about maxillofacial. Um, okay, I think that's it, am I right? I think, yeah, on my side, the last one is what is a maxillofacial? Yeah, that's it. Same people, I think that's it, right? Yes, and yeah, there's anyone else who'd like to ask more questions? Okay. Okay, then. I think there are no more questions. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you for having me. I would also like to thank the Women Ministries for this opportunity where we are reminded or learn about dental and oral health. At this time, um, let me just check if she's here. Okay, because now I want us to um, start with our Vespers now. So I just want to quickly check if she's online. <laughs> okay, I think we've got one more question. Doctor, are you still here? I'm here. Okay, yes, there is um, the last question here. It says, what if I do not like my teeth and I want to get rid of them all? Oh my. <laughs> sure, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is impure if you were a dentist to this person? <laughs> 
this so, is a very uh, difficult question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very. Take them all off. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is, you know, what is it that you do not like about your teeth? You know, even if, let's say you have to get rid of them, I would want to know, I would really like to know, what is it that you do not like? Because perhaps what you do not like can still be fixed, right? So um, it will be interesting to know, some along not the same um not the same size and big gaps some are long yeah so i would really encourage you to um consult your dentist um because also this long is relative you know how long is long you know <laughs> um and the gaps is it natural gaps or maybe you, you took out some and um, and, and things like those, and not the same, in, you know, in which context. So I would really encourage you to go consult your dentist so you can um, have a discussion. So go for a consultation and then, um, but just remember, um, just a second, my battery is running low. Just want to get a charger quickly. Um, so just remember though, when we started, remember I showed a picture with the vertical height and stuff. You still remember that picture where it was showing um, the old Magogo, you know, with a complete set and, and so if you say now you're no longer prepared to have, you, you, now you must be prepared also, you know, to, to go through all that. But obviously these days there's more modern ways, there's implants, you know, more expensive, but I mean, there is alternatives. It's unlike the dentures, you know, um, now there's more solutions. Um, but, you know, for each and every, every intervention, there is um, pros and cons. So that is why it's important that before you take such a decision, you, you know, uh, you're well informed and uh, you take the treatment that you consent to something that you do understand even the consequences of it. So it's important to discuss with your dentist. That's what I would say. All right, thank you, doctor. May I please ask the church if they are fine or they still have more questions or I should rather move to Vesta. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. I think the church is clear now. Okay. Now moving on to Vesper time. We have Sister Twane who will be doing Vespers for us. And I would also introduce her before she starts speaking. Um, she's a daughter of Zion, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and professional woman with passion for law, ethics, justice, and equity. So Sister Tuane Matole um, is a lawyer and a corporate executive. Hi, Sister Tuane, are you there? Um, hi, Simpira. Yes, I am on the line and good afternoon to you. How are uh, you, ma'am? I'm well, thank you. And good I'm afternoon to the saints. Mm -hmm. I'm great, thank you. I'm handing now this platform over to you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Um, so it's again good to connect with the Mamelodi Central Church. I think the last time I was at the church was a couple of years back. Um, but I, um, I'm grateful for the opportunity. 
Um, this afternoon, um, we, we are going to share a message, but it's actually going to be in a formal presentation. So slightly different approach to VESPA, but I do pray that when we are done, um, the Lord will, will bless um, the reading of his word and he will enrich us um, in this, through this experience. I am going to share a presentation um, and I'm hoping that it will show on your screens shortly. Um, Simpiwe, do you see the presentation on, the, on your side? Yes, I can see it. Great, thank you. Um, this, this evening or afternoon, we're actually going to reflect together I, about a text that, that we know. But before we do, I, I, um, you know, the, the message is still pivoted around the, the call that says, I will go. But one of the things that I love about being on a plane is that often when you get in, the air hostesses will tell you, they'll give you the safety instructions. And they say to you when you're on the plane, first put on the mask on yourself before you put the mask on another person, because it says very, very little peoples that you will lack oxygen and you'll probably collapse and, you know, trying to save somebody else. So first give yourself the oxygen mask and then give it to the next. So this message is really, when we talk about our goal, it's really starting at saying, let's reflect around our own state um, and, where, and where we are. Now, one of the places that gives us a, a reflection point for us is actually COVID. I, I think that COVID was probably one of the wake up calls that the Lord has given to us and continues to give us as a people around the state of our worlds and in way it is. Um, so as we reflect on it, you know, somebody said, um, you know, COVID was a dress rehearsal and is a dress rehearsal for what is coming. COVID has presented hard questions for hard times. Um, and some of the hard things that COVID has, has highlighted, even before going into it, we, we lived and we continue to see a society where there were lots of cries around rising poverty, rising racial injustice, rising inequalities, that are being exacerbated by automation and the utilization of artificial intelligence and robotics. There has been moral decay through, through the decades and more so the last decade. We have seen an increase in the abuse and taking advantage of the vulnerable, issues around environmental degradation, and there's just geopolitical tensions. You hear of wars and rumors of wars. Actually, Antonio Guterres um, from, from the World Health Organization it has said, it's quoted as saying, our world is struggling. And, and it's like creation is struggling. Creation is groaning about, about the times it way. And so, if, you know, to, when we say I will go, it is a response to what creation is saying when nature and humanity are screaming the way they are. But, but in it is also a reflection about what is our role in it and what ought to be our role in our posture in it. You know, the, the, the good thing in everything that happens, even in hard times, is that God knows the end from the beginning. And, and so even the events that we are living through, God has seen them, he has measured them. And, and the future is already weighed on the balances. So when we deal with challenge, when we deal with times, when we deal with uncertainty, we always have this amazing assurance that God has, has gone ahead of us. But as I say, this even afternoon, we really reflect around what should be our response as believers. And to do that, I'm going to share with you from the book of Revelations. And then we're going to read from chapter three and read two verses, verses one and two. It's a text that many of us know. And it says, and to the angel, of the church in Sardis right? These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die 
for I have not found your works perfect before God. I pray that the Lord will bless the reading of his word and that through his Holy Spirit, the, you know, the scripture will be breathed to life in all of us to assume a new and a fresh meaning. So, I mean, if you read this, this text in Revelations, the, the one was looking at the church of Sardis and he had churches throughout um, seven churches that he sent messages to, but, but he looked at this church. Now, you, you needed to understand Sardis. Sardis was actually a very powerful commercial city during its time. And it was known for its, um, to being at the crossroad, crossroads of commerce. And because of being at the crossroads of, of commerce and its proximity to the Aegean Sea, and many traders used to go past around Sardis. And, and therefore that made it particularly wealthy. Um, but it was also known for being a church that loved the soft life. Um, and, and because it had money, um, it, it, they just love and you know beautiful things, um, you know, just, just a good life. But sadly, you know, the church in Sardis had had somehow adopted the principles, the principles of the world. The principles of the world around materiality, about sensuality, um, the, you know, their the love for good things exceeded what their the love and excitement and passion for things of God. And, 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 so, and so because of the fact that they were prospering materially, people around them, because of the church being located in Sardis and Sardis being what it was, um, people thought, well, the church of Sardis has powerful people in it because there were the wealthy amongst them, there were the educated amongst them, there were the philosophers around them because they lived in studies. And, and so they had a reputation, people saw the activity, they were busy because they had the funds to do what they needed to do. But, but, but God, God saw something. And I think that's one of the things that we all need is, is at times just to pause and allow the Lord to speak to us, to speak to us for what he sees not to speak to us for what we want him to say to us, but when God speaks to us about what he sees, um, we, we have an opportunity for healing. You know, when, 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 when we like at work, people like saying you like drinking your own Kool-Aid, you know, some people drink Kool-Aid and then they want to convince themselves that Kool-Aid is the best cool drink or the best drink that the world has to offer. Whilst there are all kinds of things, teas and juices and whatever that's available. And so there's a problem when we sit around in our own fires and we drink our Kool-Aid and convince ourselves that's it. But the great benefit is, is when we have an opportunity for a mirror to be raised to us. And, and what the Lord was saying to the church in Sardis was, was saying to them, I know you. You have a reputation. I know people around you think that you're super, you have it all together and your world is hanging together. But the Lord was saying, I know you. I know you beyond what other people see you to be. I know that you have a reputation that you're alive. People say, available, never pay. But this is, but the Lord says, I know you and I see you. And the truth is that you are dead. You are living, you look good to the world, but inside there are some things that have happened in you, through you and around you that have caused death. You know, there are some of us who have gone through many things, many challenges in life. And at times, some of the challenges, the pain and the betrayals kill you inside. And, and bitterness and anger and all of those things kill you inside. And, and you end up whilst you're alive and yet these things have killed you. The Lord says, I know there are all kinds of, you know, all of you, some of you have been killed by bitterness. Some of you have been killed by anger. Some of you have just been killed by being sheerly materialistic. But whatever that, the Lord says it out of love. And one of the things I really, really love about God is that he sees us in our states. And when he sees us, he, he doesn't see us to condemn us. He sees us to save us. And, and so he tells them, he says, but what I see in you is darkness. I do not see light in you. You look like you have light, but actually when, when heaven looks, it sees darkness, but he sends a message of hope and a message of encouragement to the church in Sardis. He says to them, be watchful. He says, be watchful because the devil is like a roaring lion around you and he's seeking those he wants to devour amongst you. And he says, therefore, open your eyes, wake up. 
You are sleeping. You don't realize what's happening around you. Wake up, he says to the church. Wake up. Wake up. And then he says, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Now, this is, you know, the love of God. He says, you know, he is not saying that to condemn them, but he's saying you, you need to be strong. And, but also what I love is that when he sees them and he sees death, he also sees that there are some things that are remaining. So the picture that the Lord sees that not all things are dead. You know, when we see so many things going wrong and, and you see some people that we know that we love dying, when, when people lose things and just things just dissipate, he says, but some things strengthen the things that you made. We have a responsibility when things are dark to look for the positive side and say that which is remaining, strengthen that. So, so the Lord says to say this, strengthen that, those things that remain, because if you don't strengthen them, they will die too. And then greater will be the disaster. So it's a message that God gave to the children of the church of Sardis at the time as a wake up call. Because he says, I've, I've weighed your work and somehow it is not perfect before God. It's not perfect. And, and so, you know, when one reflects on this text, you, you cannot but reflect on a time, you know. It, the, 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 the amount of global wealth is absolutely amazing. The number of um, billionaires that we have and, and just the sheer luxury that people live in. And um, it's mind boggling at times. But yet at the same time, you see abject, abject poverty. I mean, when we grew up, um, there was poverty, but not the type that we see. You look at the, the informals and the, the squalor that some of our people are having to live with, yet in the same place, there is absolute wealth. Now, as, as the richest economy on the continent, do we think that the Lord is pleased with that? And as, as a people, we cannot divorce ourselves from it because we are in it. And, and in many respects, we reflect similar traits. And, and the Lord was, you know, and, and so the time that we, we are in is unprecedented and reflects some of the traits of the church and studies um, had, had, had to deal with. Um, and, and the Lord is saying, it is time. It is time for, for the church, it's time for us to really reflect and really to strengthen the things that are remaining. And, and one of the things that we, we saw during COVID, that reflected that indeed there were areas of death that had crept in, is looking at family and homes. COVID reflected that there are many who are married, but like that couple on my right, Inside the home, they would be together, but yet separate. Physically in the same space, but emotionally detached. The Lord has, has seen that. And I think what COVID did, COVID did not introduce these things. What it did was that it set a microscope on the state of families. And it was reflecting that in many families and in many of us, for many of us, particularly who work, working mothers, we spend lots of time at work, our eight, 10, 12 hours at work. Then if you remember the traffic was terrible. I mean, I remember I, I worked in Senton. It would take me an hour and a half to get to the office, another hour and a half to get back. That's three hours in a day. You leave early, you come back, you're tired. And, and the Lord was seeing through our existence. To us, it was like, we're working. We need to do this, we have to do this. But God was seeing that there is death that is creeped into families. Where people at times who are married don't know each other. And that's why during COVID, we found stories of people saying, you eh, I'm tired of being at home. Like a Oh, that because you've not been present, you've been absent. And, and so when the Lord says, strengthen the things that remain, he says, you know, he has given us through this COVID experience, the opportunity to truly reflect on our lives, how we order our things. And he says, this is the time, having seen what he revealed to us, to show us what should be. I mean, you know, one of the things that's amazing um, is, is that, you know, you had these banners during COVID that said, stay at home. And, and, and it was a true message. Not only stay physically 
actually at home, but we actually had to go back and reconnect with our homes and our families. So the family has always been the building block of our societies. I think if you ask our forefathers and hundreds of years back and even, even our own parents, a lot of them probably got surprised around how this generation is ordered in the family. You know, many of the friends, people that I know in at work and at church, everywhere, people who had children, who had children during COVID were relearning their children. You know, I would always be surprised in the news when, when the, the, you know, the Minister of Education would say, parents, please spend time with your children and do homework. I thought, okay, our children are big. Our, our eldest daughter is 24. So I, I kind of said, okay, but why is she saying that? And then COVID struck and I understood it. I only understood it when I had people complain about having to teach their children. I think in all of the days in humanity, there probably has not been a time where parents have completely, we have completely outsourced the teaching of our children to teach us. And I think the Lord was saw something in us as a people and said, you know, this is time. It is just time for reset. It is time to reflect. And we need to strengthen the things that remain, the things that are important. So before we go out into the world, into the people we don't know, into the far places, it is important that we start and, 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 and strengthen the things in our immediate vicinity, in our homes. I think COVID was an inco revealed an inconvenient truth. Um, as I said, you know, how much parenting was outsourced to teachers, to schools, to universities, to daycare centers, to child minders for those who have child minders. Um, you know, the, the societal cues were always there. The societal cues were there with high divorce rates in the church, outside of the church. 50% um, divorce rate and above. Those were always the social cues that there is something in the fundamental building block in society that has gone wrong. But we didn't see it. And, and I think that's why the spirit of the Lord in Revelation says, you have, a, you have a name that you live. You know, the people were saying, we're having a good time, you know, you know, economy, you know, all of these things, it looks like we are advanced as humanity. But the reality is that at a very fundamental level, some things are not working out. And, and so through this a time that the Lord gave us over the past year and, and you know, year, year four months, um, we've been reacquainted with how the house chores run as mothers. Many of us had forgotten where some things are. And so when we had lockdown last year, we still had to go and figure out spaces. And, and I'm, I was about, I'm one of those um, in some areas. And, 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 and we had become strangers in our own homes. Sadly, we did not notice. And sometimes the hard times are there to, to, to just shout at us, to shout at us when we don't see, when we are so occupied in our own worlds that, that, that reality escapes us. You know, there, there was clear signs of anxiety in children. And, you know, there, there were clear signs before of, of increasing drug use. Those things were children screaming. I mean, if you look at just the sheer number of childhood related mental health issues, but there was clear signs for my children screaming to say that, you know, we need you. We need you here. And so the Lord is just giving us that. As I say, our grandparents would have been shocked to see just how much power and responsibility we had outsourced. And, 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 you know, during the COVID time, I spent some, but I'm a gardener, I love, I love gardening. Oh, I love gardening, do, 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 certainly have a beautiful garden. And one of the lessons that I learned one day as I was walking in the garden was the power of presence. It, it had never, in all my years, it had never dawned on me. You know, um, when you walk in your garden every day, you start seeing the weeds as they come up, when they're small. You start seeing the bugs and you know they eat up on your plants. You start seeing the infections as they build up and you can treat your garden. But when you only see your gardens on weekends, what happens is that one day you walk and then the weeds are gonna, gonna, gonna do that. Those weeds did not wake up, did not jump, sprout out one morning. The reality is that the weeds have been coming on along. And I think in many ways, absence and not being there present enough 
long enough, things have happened in our spaces and we wonder what was that. And, and so, so this is the wake up call. And, and so tonight as we, we, we wrap up the session, the reflection point is that, you know, what are we committing to strengthen? You know, the Lord has shown us the things that in some areas that I did, I did, but in some areas things that are dying, but things that are still alive that need to be strengthened. And I think it's a reflection point for you and for me to say, but what things in our lives really is this message saying, I must go back and reflect about that I need to strengthen because they're completely destroyed. I mean, the other thing that I reflected on during COVID, COVID time is around food security. Food security. I mean, you, the people that lacked for food, I just lacked for food. Even outside of COVID, you, you go and you find dumping sites, you see dustbins. I mean, in my entire life growing up, and I mean, there are many people of us who grew up in, all of us, the adults who grew up in townships. You know this concept of people having to dig for food in dustbins? That is, un it is a sad and tragic reflection of our state, of, of the times in which we live. And that's why the Lord is saying, but no man, you, you know, this world has, a, has a, a sense where people say humanity is getting advanced. You have a, a sense that people are saying you live longer, health is, is at the top of the game, you drive cars, self-drive cars, and, and all kinds of fancy things. But the, the core of humanity is actually going down. And the Lord says, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. I mean, food insecurity, poverty, and hunger is on levels that are amazing. COVID exposed the vulnerability in the global food system. And that there were high dependencies on commercial farmers and retail businesses. That the basic arts we used to have as humanity, growing our own food, we've lost, you know. Our, you know, forefathers, um, even as Africans, knew how to grow their own food. And then you thought to yourself, if COVID had got so bad that we couldn't go to the shops, what was going to happen? And, and, and so there are some things in the advancement of humanity where it seems as though we've grown ourselves to positions of weakness as opposed to positions of strength. And Isaiah 58, verses 6 to 7, God says, is this, it's not this the kind of fast that I've chosen. I've chosen a particular fast for my people. It says the fast he has chosen for us is to lose the chains of injustice. God is, 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 is touched by injustice. You know, as, 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 as good as we look at, and, and the, with the lovely things that we have and we do, for as long as there is injustice in our midst and we are untouched by it, that is an issue in the face of God. He says he's called us to untie the cords of the, the you know, the cords of the yokes that are around to set the oppressed free. Um, and, and that we should share the, our food with the hungry to provide for the poor, um, you know, who wander with, who don't have shelter. When we see the naked, God is expecting us to clothe them and not to turn away from our own flesh and blood. You know, Proverbs 31, 8 to 9 says, you know, God wants us, he expects us as a people. When we say our goal, he says he expects us to speak for those who can speak for themselves. Yeah. When we see accumulation of wealth and they are poor, God expects us to say to the people that have, but whom, let's dig deep. Let us help. That is ministry. Christ was touched by the affliction of the poor. And Isaiah 1 verse 17, you know, God says, learn to do the right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead for the widows. And therefore, I think it's important for us to be able to, to, to see that we need to reflect about our own responses in this world. You see, the problem with poverty, and that's why I now understand why God hates poverty. Because poverty, unless it's disrupted and interrupted, it's cruel. You see, it starts with an infant and a child who grows in depravity and in hunger and poverty has delayed growth development. They're prone to sickness. The child grows to become a toddler and at times they start experiencing physical and mental developmental issues. And then unless there's a break in that, they grow up to become a child with a learning disability who cannot properly attend school. 
And unless we interact and we help where we can uh, within our own areas of influence, that person will grow to become a, a, an adult with chronic illness, without a lack of with a lack of education, with limited work opportunities and income, and then they are stuck in, in, in poverty. And then it moves, their children have to suffer the same things. And so when God says go, God sees the role that we can and should play in interrupting some of the plans of the evil one that are truly terrible and poverty um, that, that, that really robs people of, of human dignity is a problem and we ought to be touched by those things. The last, second last point that I wanted to make about reflections from COVID as, as, we, as, as we wrap up this afternoon is around, you know, the Lord seeing the state of our finances and resources. You see, finances, ability to earn an income, ability, the power to gain wealth comes from the Lord. And wealth that any human being has and the ability to work comes from the Lord. The resources come from him. But yet we live in a, in a society with the highest debt, debt burdens. I mean, I, I'll share some stats with you. And the Lord says, but strengthen the things which remain. Because, you know, you know, the person who is forever borrowed is actually slave to the lender. God says we should go, but we should first, we should break our shackles, the shackles of over indebtedness. Let's reflect on those things. You know, I read an article where they were saying over indebted, we have more over indebted consumers actually in 2021. Um, the trading economics. Um, provide dust stats on household debt in, um, versus gross income. And they said, you know, um, household debt relative to gross income is now sitting at about 72.8%. That was 2020. So in simple terms, what does that mean? If you earn 100 rand, they're saying the debt levels in South Africa are so much that if you earn 100 rand, 72 rand 8 cents is used to pay debt. So meaning that people are left with what 20, 22 rand, then they're about to pay for what time lights, food every month, take children to school. And that cannot be how God, how God wants us to live. And the Human Rights Commission actually this year released a report when they say over 50% of credit active consumers, 19 million South Africans, are over indebted. And this is compounded by low savings rate. So it means how many of us, I'm not sure how many are now on the call, if we're 14, it, you know, it, it means that seven of us are over indebted. The Lord will have us live in liberty because in that liberty, we are able to serve even more. Um, you know, incomes have reduced. Um, you know, we're seeing financially distressed customers defaulting on their debt payments. And many are living on the verge of insolvency and many have been forced to borrow further um, because they're not able to cut their spending. And actually, um, there was this guy, the chief executive of Debt Rescue, who said that they are seeing that, you know, um, many, as much as 30% of credit, people, were, oh, they were saying that um, people are turning to, to buying food on credit in these times um, because they need that immediate relief. But the long-term consequences because of steep interest rates are actually a burden to society. And so in the Lord says, you have a reputation you live. You have a reputation that you are moneyed. You drive lively cars, but the Lord is seeing behind the scenes. And he's seeing the pain. He's seeing the distress. He's seeing our anxiety, our inability to sleep because of debt. And so he says, it's time to strengthen the things that remain. COVID has been there for all of us, believers and non-believers alike, to say, wake up. See what is happening around you. Take personal ownership and accountability. And, and so when it comes to finances, and the message is we must cultivate a more considered way of living as believers. Considered way. It doesn't mean that rebedding up. You know, I don't think it means we must be in regs but we must not be impersonate to the point of our destruction. I cannot love shoes so much that even if I don't have money, I will rob myself to buy them. 
And, and if you are, you know, you, you find yourself distressed, get help. You know, one of, of the signs of maturity, it is said, is the ability to ask for help when you need it. Then we know if I can ask for help when I'm in need, then, then you should say that's maturity. Immaturity is when you do not have the ability and to ask for help when you need it. And pride just, just pulls you down. So, 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 you know, the Lord, I think, is saying to us, godly contentment is much gain. Amongst ourselves, let's learn to exert positive peer pressure, to encourage each other in, in, in living much more considered and responsible lives and not amongst ourselves live with the Jones, cause the Jones syndrome to be a permanent resident among, a resident among us. You know, there is this syndrome, this phenomenon of the high heels, the high heel stilettos. You know, whenever there are new shoes, we, we are forever looking for them as ladies. And, and I said, you know, the rich rule over the poor and the, the borrower is the servant of the lender. And the Lord is saying, it is time for us to be liberated as God's people. And then the last reflection point as I go to a close is around um, leadership. It's what? about personal leadership and institutional leadership. Program. So, um, so, sorry, um, can we please mute? I think there was some interruption. Um, so when, when it comes to leadership, where, where the Lord observed that, you, you know, there are people in positions, there are people in positions, but true leadership, true servant leadership is missing. And, you know, one, one joke that I saw, they say the problem, with the, the problem with political jokes is that they get elected. I mean, in, secular, in, in the secular space, um, people that should be leaders are found with hands in their in, 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 in the money in the money jars. And, and amongst those are people who are just going. The Lord says it cannot be. It cannot be that you are wealthy at the expense of paying bribes for tenders. And you say, may the name of the Lord be praised. It cannot be. When, when God gives you, He will give it to you straight. But some of the things we do bring the name of the Lord into disrepute. Into disrepute. Um, and, and, and you know, that, that there's this type of leadership where, where it is the people with the loudest voices. Not the wisest, but the loudest voices. The people with the strongest opinions. The people who are most articulate are said to be leaders. And yet we do not stop to look at their lives. Because God says, and by the fruit we should, you will know them. He says, because some have come amongst you as wolves in sheep's clothes. We, we, and, and the Lord says, you have a, there's a, you know, there's a reputation that you made, but eh, man, the fruits are saying something else. And so we see today that in the world that there's a disconnect between power and leadership. People yearn and are hungry for power. And yet the ability to lead, lead as Christ led, which is a selfless leadership, is missing. The world, and, and even in our churches, there's a desperate need for ethical and courageous leadership. Ethical and courageous leadership in our homes. You cannot lead in church unless you started leading at home. Leadership that's courageous in the home, in churches, at work, and every aspect of society. We have to brighten our corners where we are. When I say, I will go, it has to start with me going and brightening the corner that I've been given. Um, you know, Mark 16, verse 15 says, God Christ says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. And, and part of that is that, you know, he says, um, if any man hears my word and does them, he is like one who, who digs up a foundation and builds his house on a rock. And the rain fell and, and, and the, the, the storm was terrible. And yet the house stood. And so Christ is saying to us, there's this power in preaching the word, but coupled with action. Action is powerful. It is when we act and when we, and that, that when we go, people will believe. But when we speak and our actions define what the word says, people will look at us and say, you're what hypocrites. 
And Micah 6 verse 8, the Lord says, I love this text. I love it. it says, he has shown you, oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? And he says, but to do justly, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. God is not calling us to philosophies. There, there are many philosophies and, and, and good philosophies at that. But God is calling us to a just and upright walk with him. A walk that's grounded in humility. You know, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them. And then we can go. And when we go, the deeds will speak. So in summary, let us hear the words of Revelation 3 verse 2. And Christ says, wake up to harm people, myself included. Wake up. Strengthen what remains. There are things that remain. And you know, I observed nature is beautiful. If you, if you plant and you have a garden or a tree, even if a tree is about to die, if you take it and you trim it and you feed it and you water it, it will bloom. You will see new branches, you will see new leaves, you will see new shoots, and then you will find new fruit. And I think that's what Christ is saying. He says, I've seen some areas that have died, and I'm seeing some that are about to die. But he says, wake up. Strengthen what remains. Because he has found that our works are not complete in the sight of God. Then I close, you know, this, this it's a secular man said something profound about COVID. He says, COVID-19 is nature's wake-up call to complacent human civilization. We have been living in a bubble a bubble of false comfort and denial, and the bubble has finally burst. God has burst the bubble for us. And, you know, the devil may have intended COVID to destroy, but God says there's an opportunity for his believers to see what is happening and to stand up. Joshua says, um, choose you this day. Choose you this day. Um, what you will believe. Choose you this day how you will order your life. But he has said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I pray that all of us will make that commitment. Say, Lord, you've shown us things. Help us that we will choose your way um, and that we can then go and minister to others about what you have done in us. Um, we thank the Lord um, and blessed be the church in the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you so much, Mrs. Matole. I hope the church has been encouraged by that presentation. <clears throat> and once again, I'm thanking um, the Women Ministries Department for this powerful program that they have prepared for us. Um, at this time, I would like to remind the church about tomorrow's hiking that it's taking place at the Moreleta Kloof Nature Reserve at seven. And we are inviting also um, men to join us. We've heard yesterday uh, during Sabbath opening that they're encouraging us to exercise. So we're inviting the church to come um, to the hiking tomorrow morning. At this time, also, I'd love to ask Elder Mapanga for a vote of thanks and to close our afternoon program for us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sempiwe. Uh, I greet the church in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust we were all blessed by our speakers for today, as I was. I, I really thank you, Sislondiwe, uh, uh, Noma Matole, for accepting our invite and honoring us with your presence. Really, this whole weekend, uh, it was a, a blessing. 
it was a, a, a blessing because we had powerful women of God. All the message that came through in many ways, but it was in basic saying that we need to go back to basics because when viewers started yesterday, she touched on us looking at our health, making sure that we are taking good care of our health when it comes to exercising and eating. And also even today now, you know, they've just tied it up uh, with uh, Umam Matole telling us to reflect and strengthen the things which remain and are ready to die. You know, we, we have had this time as, as uh, during this COVID to look at all the things that we thought it has taught us to see what is it that is really important in our lives, to prioritize what is important in our lives. So as we have received uh, such a motivation, as she was talking, what, what are you committing to go and strengthen? I think that's going to start with us as an individual from this session. What do I go back and go and strengthen as an individual, as a family, as a community? What is it that we are committing? We are going to go back there and strengthen. And I, I, I think as a church, we are really going through a tough time. We really have, even in the lessons and I isn't it has to change because it's just the time. It shows that times are asking for us to have that wake up and strengthening what uh, uh, remains so that we don't lose all God has still given us this time. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation, Mama Tole, no, no, sis, um, no, 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 sis Londi before you, Dr. Malobe. And also I thank you Simpiwe also for facilitating this program for this afternoon. You've done such a job, well done, uh, keep up the good work. Uh, but before we close, I really think it's important for us just to have a season of prayer. Um, for we know we have families uh, that are having people that are sick at home. We also have lost uh, some, some, some um, um, members we know who are having uh, memorial services that are going through even as we're having this service here. So we just need to have that prayer for us to dedicate ourselves and to ask God to be with us continuously and uh, to protect us in all that is going on. At this time, I will ask Uba uh, Maswele to please just pray for us, to pray for, our, uh, uh, for us as a church, to pray for those who've lost their loved ones, for those that have Abandu Abakulayo at this time. So if we can just close their eyes and uh, pray at this moment, thank you. All the lessons, the teachings that we got from this morning of Jehovah from Sabbath school, lesson that we created in Jehovah, that the lessons that we created this afternoon about the health issues and the wake up call about what the situation is in our lives today globally. What COVID-19 has brought to our daily lives that we should wake up to what is happening at the moment. Lord, we thank you for all these wonderful messages. Mama Mel. 
de vous et Jehova, Baga de Demachitish, de Barça de Seven Corba, Pacharetz came as a jacket in a mudim, Robia Pilaha mudim or conquil would hook. Papa seems as a spatter saw crest to Matlakamuk. A honour monger must be in country how crested. Rebellets of Huena Jehova, or two Sarona, it has a Huena mudim. Kahomu dimor rapel arsola pele Jehova re. He kabe Jehova di visa ronanta te kete ka alonta te ortsare le Jehova. Ortsare le kama thata o chare le zal mo lafatse ni le mu dimor re. He wanta te this is the punishment towards the earth, towards the leadership, towards the corrupt nature in which the whole world is. We ask you not for forgiveness. We pray for the leadership of this world. We pray for the leadership of our churches. We pray for the leadership of our communities, of even our homes. We ask you, Father God, to be with us. We pray all this in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen, and thank you for everyone for joining. Have a blessed week, Feather. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.